And by the way, I want to talk about one of our favorite subjects here on the story. It's a little segment that we've kind of dubbed the elephant in the room, and it's about the Oregon Republican Party. You might remember we started paying attention, kind of special attention to them earlier this year when the official arm of the Oregon GOP published a referendum calling the insurrection on January 6th a false flag. Some elected Republicans in the legislature condemned that statement, and we started seeing, as a result, or at least after that, kind of a split between the party heads and those actually in office. And at that point, the party leadership was made up of people kind of behind the scenes and party insiders, not elected lawmakers. Well, Things have now changed because the party selected new leaders, including two state senators who are considered among the farthest of the far right. And then earlier this month, other Republicans in the Senate introduced a bill that would basically force the GOP chairman, Senator Dallas Hurd, to resign from one of the jobs, either his elected post or he has to step down if this bill passes as GOP chairman. So to anyone looking at this from the outside, it seems like there is a divide between some of the more extreme elements of the party and kind of the more traditional conservatives. And earlier this week, Dan, before he went on vacation, got some perspective from the inside. He talked to Senate Minority Leader Fred Girard. I'm wondering how you feel right now with the strength and unity of the Republican Party. Well, I could ask you a question. Are, are you married? I am, yeah. Well, do you ever have an argument with your wife? Sure, yes. <laughs> Okay. This is an argument within the Republican Party, and it, we'll work through it. We have in the past, and we'll continue to do so in the future. Do you think it is the right move to have somebody who is an elected leader be the head of the oh. GOP while the elected leaders already decide who is going to kind of be their leadership within Salem? <laughs> he was duly elected. The, the uh, PCPs elected Dallas Heard. And I mean, that's just the way it is. I, uh, uh, that isn't exactly uh, what uh, I think should, I, I just don't want to go there. And th I, this isn't the questioning we signed up for. I, I know that you want to ask these kind of questions, but the party to me is the most sacred thing that I got right now, and I'll be damned if I'm going to try to split it up. And I just think these questions are designed to split the Republican Party up, and I'm not going to do it. Well, I'm only asking it because this was already broached by a bill that was proposed to make leaders choose between elected office and GOP leadership. But that, but that bill got pulled. But it was written, and I didn't write it. And it was written by okay. Republicans, and that's why I bring it up. That's right. So I'm not trying to divide the party. I'm only trying to ask questions about things the party is currently doing and asking if, if you think, as one of the leaders, it's the best, best path forward. I don't think confrontation within the Republican Party is the best approach. I believe very strongly in the 11th Commandment that Reagan set forth. And therefore, I, I just don't think I need to speak ill of anybody. I would like to say one thing. I, yeah. I have historically, um, I'm old school, and Peter Courtney's old school, and uh, we uh, tend to do things kind of differently in the sense that we believe that the parties should work together and we try to do the best that we can for the good of the people. And right now, both sides have uh, got extremes that don't want to do that anymore. And so, oh, All right, so to that last point, Senator Gerard told Dan that he thinks his political career is winding down. What do we mean by winding down? Well, he is not planning to run again after this term ends.